Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar Wednesday for the month of November. We're so happy that you guys could join us because I know everything is getting pretty crazy with Christmas coming around and everyone trying to, to close up the year. Um, today we have Tom Costa from uh, ZIT and he will be talking about the Z customer portal. So what we'll do is I've muted everybody um, for now and we'll do a question and answer period uh, towards the end. But uh, Tom, I will pass it to you. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. So thank you for attending today's uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Tom Costa and I'm with uh, ZSuite. And We've been a uh, software solution provider for SAP for probably about, I want to say it's going on nine years now. So we have really quite a bit of experience with uh, SAP Business One, and our forte is the web. So really what we've focused on throughout our history is uh, providing web-based products that extend the reach of SAP Business One out And it will have our query portal actually embedded inside of it. So we're actually going to take a look at two products at the same time. Uh, I'm also going to spend just a few minutes on our e-commerce and our upcoming release of our version 8 of e-commerce and kind of some of the uh, guiding principles behind what we're trying to achieve with the next version of our e-commerce application. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about our mobile strategy. And this is something that if at the beginning of this year, uh, beginning of 2012, if you were to ask us what our mobile strategy was, we probably would have said we didn't have one. But over the course of, the, of, of this year, we've realized that a lot of our customers, or I should say almost everyone, is now using mobile devices, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device, to be able to get to the web and thus possibly be able to use some of our products. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about our mobile strategy moving forward, and we'll start seeing that as we start rolling out our next versions of each of these products throughout uh, the coming year. But again, it is something that uh, how people interact with the web, I would say at the beginning of the year, it was a laptop and a browser or a desktop and a browser. But during the course of this year, it's really changed considerably, and ZSuite's been able to shift our attention to meet that new coming need. At the very end, we will have time for a Q&A session as well. So one of the things that I like to talk about is, you know, it goes in line with that mobile strategy I was just talking about, is that customers are now via the web. And that comes from a lot of on the personal side of things, whether it be social networking or online shopping or how they pay their Visa or American Express bill a lot of interaction now between companies and consumers to companies is now done uh, via the web. And when you think of you know, the wired generation of you know, the 30-somethings that are out there, they really are expecting the ability to interact with you at some level via the web, whether that be our customer portal, which I'll be talking about in just a minute, or other ways of interacting with you over the web. So it's become a very uh, important strategy for all of us to really start to embrace that the web isn't going away and that our customers, uh, even Zed's customers, are looking to interact with us via the web as well. So it's come from not only our own personal experience, but also what we're seeing in a lot of the trade publications as well, that uh, people are now expecting this. Not that they would like to have it, that they're expecting it. And that really puts it in a different light. So the product that we're really going to be talking about today, the main one, is our customer portal, which allows customers to log in and be able to interact with you in a real-time environment over the web. And it's really designed to make customers uh, make it easier for these customers to do business with you because the easier we can make it for your customers to do business with you, well, possibly your customer retention will go up a notch or two, which means 
big money for you if we can keep that customer retention at a very high level. So some of the things that we're able to provide to your customers over our portal is, well, has anyone ever been asked by a customer, can you send me an invoice? Or did my order ship? Or what's my price on this item? Uh, or do you have something in stock? These are all very common questions that we all get on a day-to-day -day basis. And the customer portal is able to meet these very easy requests over the web. So again, customers can get this information whenever they want. And your staff isn't overloaded with these relatively you know, easy questions, but it may take a few minutes to be able to answer these. So again, we're going to try to free up customer service so that they now have more time to spend on the more difficult questions. And we're going to make it easier for your customers to do business with you because, again, it, they can get this information whenever they want. They can also pay their invoices online, which is a very popular aspect of the customer report because, again, all of us pay at least some of our bills online. So we're now expecting that if we can do it on our personal side, we also are expecting to do that on our, in our business life as well. And with the added of the uh, or addition of the order pad, customers can also place an order with you as well. So again, some of these easier orders that could be a reorder from a prior order or just a couple of lines that they need to place with you. Again, they can go on the portal, go through it, and submit the order to you very quickly and very easily. In our query portal, which in this case I'm going to be showing as part of that. Uh, customer portal. We've added the ability to do charting and a new web design and again make it that much easier of a customer experience and we've also added an iPad or an iTunes iPhone app for it so again if you're deploying our query portal in its standalone fashion then they'll be able to run these reports uh, via the uh, iPhone and when it's run in the standalone environment not only can customers get information from you uh, but also your employees who may not have a license to Business One can access it, get information, and also vendors can access the information to find out, you know, information that you want to share with your vendors. So at that, let's go over to our uh, query portal or our customer portal and be able to log in now. So again, the uh, the home page of our customer portal is designed to be customized so that your messaging can go here, your images, your company name and logo, and a lot of that we can provide to you in our standard implementation time. So I'll go ahead and log in as uh, an existing customer of yours. So the first thing that we're greeted with is our dashboard, and this shows the last 10 orders that, that your customer placed with you. And the first thing that comes out that stands out is, well, the order that was placed uh, earlier this week on the 16th did not ship yet because there's no delivery date. But the order that shipped on October 22nd down below did ship because we have a ship date, we have a ship method, and we have the tracking number. So all of this information is coming directly from Business One in a real-time environment. And we can even drop down to be able to see if there were multiple shipments for this order. Again, these are the two delivery notes that were created for the order number 270 and again provide their specific information. When did the second order ship and what was its tracking information? So again, uh, we're trying to make it very easy for your customers to be able to get this information and uh, ultimately be able to have a good ex customer experience with doing business with you because in some, this could be the difference between doing business with you and possibly doing business with one of your competitors because they, you're able to provide them this service. Now they're also able to take a look at their last invoices and again if we drill down on an invoice we can say we can now print the invoice directly out of the browser for them and just like Business One, through the uh, invoice details, we can drill back to the delivery note and to the sales order that this invoice came from. So the same type of functionality that you're used to seeing inside Business One. And of course, we're going to be able to take a look at their last payments. Did you get my last payment? And if you did, 
uh, which invoice was it applied to. And in this case, uh, uh, payment number 74 was invoiced, uh, was applied against invoice number 103, and the balance of that invoice is now zero. So again, customers are going to be able to see, did you get my last payment? Where was it applied to? Again, very common questions that we all have been asked over time. We can also now drill down to the statement. So again, in a real-time environment, we're able to provide customers with the ability to see all of their, uh, their statement and their invoices. Again, drill down on an invoice, get the details. But they're also able to pay any of these invoices online. So in this case, we're able to see all of the invoices. And you know, just like Business One, we can start checking off which invoices do we want to pay. And in Canada, we, uh, we, we can allow you to have those invoices paid via credit card. And uh, in the U.S., if it's a U.S. company, we do have an ACH bank transfer, but that's more of a U.S. banking system, so that's what the ACH button was. But in Canada, we do offer the ability to pay these, credit, these invoices off via credit card, and you're also able to be able to pick up the, uh, the miles for using your credit card. So as we enter in the credit card number, we'll put in the... Uh, valid month, put in his address. Now again, we do have to type in this information every time because we don't store the credit card information anywhere. So again, it's a very secure site because nothing, we're not storing the credit card information so it's not going into a database. We're not even really sending it to business one. Click on pay now. So at this point, the uh, information is going up to the credit card gateway, which in Canada we do support a variety of Canadian credit card processors. Uh, and one of the main ones is Monera. So that is a standard uh, credit card gateway that we uh, provide out of the box. And uh, that's actually that uh, pass that goes up to Monera. So in this case, they've approved it. The customer is given a reference number. Then if we go back to the statement, we can see those invoices have been paid. They're no longer there. Inside of Business One, we can go over to Banking, pull up the last payment, and there's the two invoices that we just paid for the Norm Thompson account. So the customer just enters in their credit card information, click Submit. Inside Business One, it comes in as an incoming payment. And we can see that it was done via Visa card. Here's the GL account number where those funds are put up against. And we can see the last four digits of the account, but that's really the only thing that we're sending. And the voucher number is the same as the reference number in that the customer was given. So again, a very easy way to audit back the payment. But your side really doesn't have to do anything. We've done it all for you. We've created the incoming payment, so it's easier for your staff. And obviously, it was easier for the customer to get that those two invoices paid and immediately post to their account. And that's also very important that in some cases, even on a personal level, you'll pay a bill and then they make back a message, takes three days to process. Well, in our case, what we've done is as soon as we get that authorization number or approval code back from the gateway, that payment goes through and everybody is now done with this transaction. You know, customers can also take a look at their order lists, again, from the menu along the side. And we also provide the uh, ability to uh, drill down on any of these orders and do a very quick reorder. So if we wanted to order the same thing we ordered last time, very quickly, very easily, we click one button. The order pad is populated. We can pick a shipping method, enter in a PO number. Say which day we'd like it to ship, 
and even include some special handling for how this should be processed. We can preview the order, which gets our pricing, but this preview button is a configuration setting. So if you don't want the, if your customers don't want the people who place orders to see the price, we can remove, remove the preview button. So again, fairly configurable to tailor the order pad and really all of the customer portal to the type of customer experience that you wish to provide your customers. Order looks good. We can go ahead and hit submit order. It's now number order 277. And when we go back to our dashboard, there's order number 277. That's already in business one. Let's pop over there and take a quick look. Order number 277 for the, uh, for the server that we just ordered. And again, right now this order is ready to be picked, packed, and shipped. Now we can put some workflow rules in here so that if you do have approval processes that you'd like to occur as these orders come in, those same normal uh, business one order approvals will kick in. We can have the order come in as an open order or as an unapproved order. So again, if orders come in from the customer portal and you want someone to look at it before it goes to the warehouse, we can set the uh, status to have these orders come in as unapproved. So again, some configuration, but it allows us to tailor that experience to meet your business requirements very easily, really without any coding. I mean, it's just a checkbox option. So again, very easy for customers to be able to place orders. And now, you know, one of the things I talked about was our query portal and being in that stand, uh, in that embedded mode. So we have some of our reports, let's say, like, uh, do you have something in stock? Well, that's a standard uh, report that we include with our query portal so that your customers will be able to determine, do you have something in stock or is it on order or really whatever you'd like to share with them. But that ability to share information that's appropriate to share with your customers, our query portal, when it's embedded into the customer portal, uh, will allow for that. We can also uh, take a look at what their pricing rate might be. So if they have any quantity break or special pricing, it's just a query inside of Business One. And again, we can share that with the appropriate customer so that they see their pricing, if that's what you want to share with them. Um, so again, some of those standard questions to make it very easier for your customers to do business with you, we're taking care of the, some of the basic questions. Now these reports can not only be in a grid format, but uh, they also can be in a, uh, in a graphical environment. So if you wanted to share with your customers what have they been buying year over year with you, uh, then of course then we can provide that. It is in a, in a pivot table environment, which allows customers to kind of slice and dice this information of theirs. So if they wanted to see the quantities that they've been buying from you year over year, then we can provide that as well. And as soon as we edited the pivot table, the charts changed automatically as well. So again, we can see that from a dollar perspective, we're selling a lot of the uh, transfer kits. And from a uh, quantity perspective, I think we're selling quite a few of the Lexmark printers. So again, we can display these graphically either as pie charts, bar charts, really about 30 different types of charts that are available to us. But again, what makes sense based on the information we're providing to the customer is it does it make more sense to provide something graphically or do they just want to see the, the numbers? So again, either way, we're going to be able to provide a very easy uh, and customer friendly experience for your customers to be able to take a look at things. So that's the uh, customer portal with our order pad and the embedded query portal. Now, of course, we do sell the query portal standalone. And uh, again, this could be for uh, customers that may not purchase the customer portal. They just don't need the query portal. Or vendors, you can offer this to be able to let your vendors run queries as well, or even employees. So if it's an employee logging in, uh, we provide over 30 different queries with the query portal that allow for you know everything from a uh, a profit and loss statement 
you know. And again, is it uh, presentation quality? No. Is it giving you all the relevant information for the numbers you're looking for? Well, yes, it does. So again, a very easy way of uh, providing information to employees and to vendors and to customers, people that may not have a Business One client license can now access information out of Business One via the query portal. So again, some uh, very relevant information that we can provide. And based on the role of the person who's logged in, we can limit the reports they can see on the left-hand side. And then based on their login, we can use that to filter the actual data so that sales reps only see their customers or their orders or vendors only see items that they sell you in terms of how much you have on hand to determine whether or not they should be submitting a PO to you to, so that you could reorder some additional product. So again, we can tailor the data and secure everything based on the login and the role and provide really anything that we can write a query for we can publish up through the query portal. And again, the query portal is not only available as a browser-based application, but it's also available on, as an iPhone app as well. Because when you're looking at this information, you know, based on the form factor of an iPhone, there's a little different real estate to deal with. So we do have to tailor that user experience to the device. So we actually created an app that you can download from the iTunes store to be able to try this out. So the app is free for anyone that owns the query portal. One of the other uses that we have for our query portal is as a custom portal starter kit. Because as you saw, uh, we have the user management built into the query portal. We can tailor the design menus for you. It obviously has reporting built in and a security level, and we can drill down to those documents to be able to take a look at a drill down and then view it further so the document viewer is included as well. And we've done a variety of different custom portals, because as I said before, ZSuite really has a lot of expertise taking information out of Business One or extending Business One up to the web. And we're able to do that very easily by using the query portal as a starter kit. And we've built expense portals and warehouse portals and really all kinds of different um, web portals for our customers. And in some cases, the customer uh, had an IT department that was very skilled in web uh, development. We sold them our query portal. We sold them uh, some, some, some just a minimal number of training hours to get them started. And they were able to build their own custom web portal themselves. So that's a very open environment to be able to supply to uh, customers to be able to say, well, we don't have to build whatever you'd like on the web. Here's a starter kit. It does all of these things, which every portal, that any type of web portal that you build against Business One, you need to do these things anyway. Let's start here, and then we can uh, work with you on developing the actual business logic of what your portal what you want your portal to do. So this is uh, something that we've been doing uh, quite a bit over the last couple of years, and it's come, become a very big part of our business to be able to do this, because even an expense portal, when you think about how different companies process expense reports, I've worked for a variety of companies over the years, and nobody's the same. There's always some specific business rules, or what you want, or what you allow, or how you validate something. So it's always going to be somewhat unique to individual companies. But this custom portal starter kit puts a big jump forward into that project and makes these projects a bit more feasible to attempt. And again, if you've got the right uh, staff as part of your IT department, we can train them on, on the starter kit and uh, you can work on the project yourself. Or of course you can always contract us or Encaptus to be able to do this work as well. So something new that we're going to be more actively marketing uh, is this custom custom portal starter kit because we you know we're always working on some project for someone. So now let's change gears a little bit and talk uh, a bit about our e-commerce solution. And uh, the Z e-commerce product's been out for a number of years, and Encaptus has a variety of customers running it. But 
we're coming out with a new version. It'll be out probably sometime in uh, you know between Q, you know March April time frame of next year. And one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was the customer experience. We really wanted to be able to uh, uh, provide a much deeper and a much richer customer experience when they're shopping the store. So the first thing that we did was we created a new um, theme or web design that comes with the product that can be used as, again, a starting point for a theme that more uh, provides for uh, what you would like to provide your customers in terms of a web experience. But we've also started taking a look at some additional design trends. And one of those is what's called a responsive design. And this is a fairly new term. In fact, I probably only heard it about six months ago for the first time. And what that responsive design allows us to do as we start using some newer uh, technologies is when I uh, access your uh, e-commerce site uh, via browser, let's make it look like this. If I hit the site from my iPad, a little different form factor, let's respond to, oh, this is an iPad accessing the site. Let's design the site so that when an iPad hits it, we display the information this way, taking advantage of the iPad. If someone accesses the site via an iPhone or an Android smartphone, again, we'll sense the type of device that's accessing the site and conform, basically provide a theme that best provides that information on that form factor that the phone has, that the tablet has, that the browser has. So again, we're really trying to, you know, be uh, to an extent platform agnostic because there's so many different devices out there, including the new Windows 8 tablet and smartphones that they just came out with. So as we, uh, as someone accesses the site with version 8, we're going to be able to conform to the type of conform the experience to the type of device that's accessing the site, basically making it mobile friendly because we really don't know what kind of device is going to access the sites. So this type of a design approach really allows us to very uh, quickly uh, provide a mobile version, so to speak, of the sites. They won't necessarily be apps that you download from the App Store, but we're going to sense the device that's hitting the site and conform to your device. We're also going to make it much more SEO friendly, a continuation of some of the versions that we've come out with throughout 2012. We've been adding to the search engine optimization of the product with each release, and we're going to continue to do that uh, with our next release as well. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek at uh, version 8 and that little bit of that, uh, what we have in mind in terms of really uh, enhancing that customer experience. So here is really going to be the new starting point for our e-commerce solution. Uh, very much taking advantage of some of the newer things that we have, but basically what we're doing is rewriting uh, some of the default themes to really look a little bit more uh, consumer oriented, but again, the other themes are always going to be available as well. So uh, be able to take a look at, you know, just a, an enhanced customer experience. So a site that's going to confirm more with what uh, users are experiencing throughout the, uh, the internet. And again, be able to drill down to your item. So again, all of this information, this is the remarks field from the item remarks inside of business one. The part numbers, the pricing, uh, all coming from inside of Business One. Even user-defined fields are going to be supported with uh, not only the current version, but also into the future as well, because we know so often a lot of content is maintained in that user-defined field. And of course, the people who have bought this also bought these items, other items, because again, the purpose of our e-commerce site is to help you sell over the web, but help you sell a lot over the web. So, so again, with this uh, newer design, we think we've got uh, very much a, a design that people are going to take to and really hopefully enhance your presence on the web. You know, be able to do things, categories, uh, use the thumb uh, breadcrumbs to be able to help again enhance that ease of use with the uh, 
uh, customer with the e-commerce solution. So again, we've been taking a lot of feedback over the last couple of years, and we do think that uh, newer designs like this and making this uh, uh, via a mobile strategy, where if this is being if this page is being viewed not on a browser like we're seeing it now, but on an iPhone or an Android tablet or a Playbook, it's going to conform. It's going to respond to that type of device and make it very easy for customers to be able to go through the site with a mobile device as opposed to just having a browser available to us. They'll still access it via their browser, but when we sense the, the uh, device that's being used, we're going to immediately render a site that's friendly to that type of device. And we think that's really a way that uh, a variety of uh, other companies are also going with this web response, so it's very much the mainstream uh, mobile strategy. So that's a little bit of a peek as to what our uh, version 8 is going to look like, and of course, where the starting point is going to be for companies to design the site to, again, tailor it to uh, the particular type of customer experience that you're looking to provide your customers, so a much better starting point for projects as well. We're also going to take a look at the admin side of things to, again, enhance how you administer your site. So we are going to update the documentation once again to, again, make it uh, a lot easier for customers to be able to do a lot of the work themselves, but also try to enhance the productivity, uh, specifically with uh, the customization portion of our e-commerce. It's not that unusual for customers to ask us to customize the site to fit a particular how they do business, right? There's always something special about how an order is taken. That's probably the most common. Uh, so we're going to expose uh, much more of the application, the source code of it, so that uh, these customizations will be much easier to do. And when I say easier, we are basically saying less expensive because there will be less hours involved for a particular type of project. So we are going to be providing uh, a bit more of the source code available to uh, our customers to be able to allow them to do these uh, customizations, but it's also going to improve our ability to customize the application as well. So uh, and quite a bit of enhancements to the software developers kit that comes with the application. We're also going to improve the catalog management. So again, uh, make it much easier for you to maintain those catalogs on a move forward basis. So again, even though your customers will never see this, it's going to make it easier for you to maintain the software. And the same is going to be true on the uh, content management side as well. Again, we're going to try to improve those uh, tools that are already there, but make them easier to use, make them more productive for you. And we'll always be adding some additional core features to the application, but really it's in the customer experience on the front end, but also with you being our customer, we want to improve your experience with the software as well by you know, enhancing some of the tools that are already there, but making them a bit more, uh, extend their uh, uh, reach a bit. You know, and lastly, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, our mobile strategy. And again, what we're going to do is not just with our e-commerce solution, but for all of our products, e-commerce, customer portal, query portal, allow them to be much more mobile friendly and with this responsive design uh, concept. So again, you know, as I've been saying, based on the device, these applications will conform to the type of device to provide the best possible experience for your customers. And you'll see this as we roll this out throughout the, uh, throughout the year. We are going to be uh, uh, reintroducing a sales rep portal, uh, and basically a redesign of that, very much going to that mobile concept. Uh, we're going to be rebuilding it, not just a redesign, but actually rebuilding it using our Query Portal as a starter kit, so we're actually doing the same uh, custom portal starter kit concept ourselves as we redo our sales rep portal. So sales reps will be able to see their customers, their sales opportunities, their uh, they'll take a look at their activities, 
uh, and be able to edit and add all of the above. But we're also going to be adding an ordering and quoting capability to it as well. We're going to take the order pad that we have in our customer portal, and we're going to be applying that to our sales rep portal. So again, a uh, complete rework of that application uh, due out, you know, hopefully first half of next year. The white label app is, let's say you want to provide a, uh, a, an app uh, for your customers. And, uh, you know, it, rather than having them go to the Z Suite site on iTunes and download the Z query portal for the iPhone, what we'd like to do is work with you on uh, providing, let's say, you know, and we'll use Encaptus as an example, is we can help or build in the Encaptus app that would be downloaded from Encaptus's site on iTunes. So when they download that applet, that app for their phone or for the iPad or from Google, uh, from their store, they're actually going to be downloading the Encaptus app. So that's what we mean by a white label app, that we can actually help provide those types of services. So if you would like to provide apps for your customers that are branded to you, not, not the Z query portal, but the Encaptus query portal for the iPhone, that's what that white label app really allows us to do, is to be able to build mobile apps for our customers that are branded for that customer. So they would go to the Encaptus website, click here to go to the iTunes store, download the query portal, for instance, as an example. But again, a variety of different things that we can help assist with there. And I really wanted to let you know that these are the type of projects that we've been doing uh, throughout our entire history, but we really wanted to you know, get the message out a little bit more that we can provide you know, white label app development assistance. And again, it's going to be different for everyone, but again, it is something that we would like to uh, work with you on, those types of projects. So, uh, Bonnie, what I'd like to have you do now is uh, turn over the uh, unmute everyone and, and see if there are any questions that we can take. We have, a, we have about 15 minutes for uh, questions right now. 